Time for another stock review. This time we are talking Sunrun, ticker symbol R-U-N. Very difficult to pick a solar company, but uh, we're going to try and uh, have a look at this one and see if it's worth worth uh, an investment. So uh, during this review, we're going to go a uh, deep dive into the stock. We're going to look at the solvency score, the balance sheet, uh, who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside, the short interest, um, how much money they've got, what their margins are, the whole thing deep dive. We're also going to take a look at the website, some latest news as well around the stock, the competition, give you some uh, extra information you can do your own research with as well, plus a back test against the, against the SNP. All of that is coming up. Now, my reviews are completely real and unbiased. I'm not in the stock. I don't own any stocks. I only own the S&P 500. So I'm fully invested. Every penny I've got goes into the S&P 500. That is because because I want to be completely impartial and unbiased. I'm here just to present the facts using the most advanced algorithmic software I believe is the best way to uh, review a stock and share it with you. And if you want to use the software that I use, wait to the end of the video. I'll give you a link. It's in, the, it's in the description of this video. And all my members can get a free copy of this or a premium version with, with a discount that will make my membership to my channel completely free. Here to help people not to promote stocks, even though we do rank for many of the stocks that we cover because we now rank for the word stock. So anything with the word stock after it, I seem to rank for, which is great. And all my reviews end up on Alpha Spread because they like my reviews because they are unbiased based upon facts and facts alone. Right. If you like this content, please tap the like button and uh, click subscribe and ring the bell. I go live up to 10 hours a day. And if you want a review like this, just comment below in the comments. And uh, if you are a member, that is only members only. And uh, I will do your review. It goes on the list. I'm doing back to back reviews until they're all done. If you want to jump to the top, do a super chat and I will do your review for you straight away. You'll see it come up within the next few hours. I'm doing them back to back to get them all done for my members. Okay, without further ado, let's get straight into it and uh, look what is uh, Sunrun. So Sunrun, as we can see from the all-time chart here, we've been going sideways for a while. We popped up and we fell away. So the first thing we want to do is look at what caused this in the investor relations pages of the website. We can do that. Also, before I go any further, Mary G. Powell is the CEO of this company. I invite you, so anyone who's watching this video, uh, you are an investor or you like Sunrun, please reach out to Investor Relations. It's much better coming from you. I don't reach out or or troll anyone. I just put my content on my own platforms. They find me and they come onto my show. I have a Meet the CEO series where I interview the CEOs of companies where they can give their reaction to my reviews. So if you'd like uh, the CEO, which is Mary Powell on the show, and you are an investor, uh, uh, reach out on, in, on uh, investor relations pages or email or whichever you like through social media. And I would love to have Mary on the show and learn more about the company. All right, let's uh, have a look at it. Sunrun engages in the design, development and installation, sale, ownership and maintenance of residential solar energy systems. Now, I have a solar system on my home in England and I'm fully off grid, so I understand the power of it. Um, it sells solar service offerings and installs solar energy systems for homeowners. Let's have a little bit more. Customers can access its products through three channels, direct to consumer, uh, solar partnerships and strategic partnerships. The company was founded by Edward Harris uh, Fenster, Robert Nat Creamer and Lynch, uh, sorry, Lynn Michelle uh, uh, Jurek. Uh, I, I apologize if I've mispronounced your names. In uh, January um, 2007, headquartered in San Francisco, California. And of course, the ticker is R-U-N, Sunrun. Okay, so as we said, the CEO is Mary J. G. Powell. First thing I'd like to do is on my ex account, Instagram, is make friends, and as I do with all the CEOs, and all the companies that I review and build relationships. Best way to understand a company is know the person that runs it. So I'll be doing that. Employees, 12,408, San Francisco, founded 2007. Maintenance, if you are buying this on margin, it's regarded as sort of mid to low risk. 25% is the lowest, 100 is the, is the highest. So uh, this is 45. <coughs> Excuse me. 
market cap 2.85 billion so it's not a not a huge company uh however again remember that is the only valuation of what the shares outstanding are worth and what people are prepared to pay. The company could be worth 10 times that or 10 times less that. That is just the price that people are prepared to pay right now. 52 week high 2818 and 52 week low 843. A lot of volatility here then. Losing money, negative 261, uh, price to earnings ratio. That's the price you're paying to the earnings ratio. No dividend here. Uh, 15 million is the average volume. Today is so far at 9.49 the million, two, uh, sorry, 9.49 in the morning, uh, 2.92 million. So, uh, you know, not huge volume, but not uh, small either. So at least you'll, you'll be able to get out of the stock if you want to try and sell it. You won't be waiting around too long. Okay, let's move on down. Now, first of all, we'll look at Morningstar. I would never use this for a review. Of course, they're paid to give reviews. They've got incentives and so on and so forth. I do it all for free. So, you know, I'm not really a fan of this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it's a basic you know, structure. Buy 68%, hold 28%, and a sell is just 31 what the bulls? What are the bulls saying? They're saying residential solar is still significantly underpenetrated at less than five percent of the addressable market. Now I'm going to add to that. Very very important because uh, solar is an expensive thing to have to to add to your property. I know I've done it. Um, and when interest rates are high, uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's this industry is impacted. We are expecting uh, interest rates to come down later this year. Um, but uh, it's very difficult to pick the best solar company. But remember, like it says there, it's underpenetrated. It is. Um, and until we get to 80%, which we will one day, we will. We, we need solar. It's the way forward. Until we get there, then there is, there's plenty of competition. However, you got to, you need a company with a good moat, a good balance sheet. And my favorite, actually, at the moment is Enphase. Uh, they seem to have the best balance sheet uh, 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 at the moment. However, I'm looking at this for the first time. I'm going to look at Sun's um, balance sheet in a minute for the very first time. I do these during the live. Uh, I make them live, unedited, as I read them out. So, uh, you know, it's it's real as it, as it comes. Um so there's loads of opportunity for sun uh, for for solar, um, but you got to. It's very difficult to pick the right one. You might prefer an ETF, a basket of uh, solar companies. All right, let's go further in. The bears are saying Sun Run's business is highly sensitive to interest rate changes. Well, there you go. Like I just said. This, this industry is subject to interest rates, but that could be a catalyst because they're about to come down. So that's a, a potential upside for this stock. All right. Now then, looking at the... Um Looking at the uh, earnings here, we can see that uh, the company now is uh, making money. We're starting to make money, at least. Um, we have been negative recently, but uh, we've been going generally sideways, a bit up, bit down, bit up, bit down. But generally, there's a, a medium line running through here. And, uh, you know, um, it's uh, been been consistently, apart from here in Q1, uh, been beating earnings, which is good. OK, OK. Now, who are we in bed with? This is very, very important. This gives the volatility of the stock. See who is buying the stock, um, because that will tell us the direction and who's, you know, do we have any other companies that are, you know, uh, attract the right investor? It's important because if we have Mullen in this list or scam stocks like that, Lucid, which are purposely trying to be driven to zero to take them private, then it can affect the, the momentum of the stock. We've got plug power. Plug power is great, but I've proven it many, many times that there's a lot of Russian corruption here, a lot of influence to dry, dry the stock up, drive it back down. It's terrible. Great company, great. They're doing great things, but some of the uh, the gamblers and investors involved with this don't care about the company. They just care about themselves, which means we've got plug investors on this stock. So expect some volatility. Sunova Energy, I don't know. I've not researched it. Sun Power, I've not researched it. Enphase Energy, there's my favourite. That's a great, uh, great, a great managed company. Better than Solar Edge. Got a much bigger moat, much better balance sheet. 
they can uh, beat the competition. But again, I haven't got through to the balance sheet of Sun yet. Maybe I'll find something better with Sun. Who knows? Fuel cell energy, uh, very volatile. Again, a lot of risk there. So we've got a lot of volatility here. No question about that. Um, let's go straight now into the website and have a little look at uh, th their website, how they present themselves to their investors and customers. Sunrun call volume above normal in directional bullish. Uh, so we we do in, in directionally bullish. So we do have uh, some positive sentiment recently when this came out, which was February the 1st, just a few days ago. Uh, so I just thought I would uh, bring that latest news up. Bullish option flow detected in Sunrun with 17,149 calls uh, trading, two times expected. An implied volume increasing over 1.0 to 99.52%. Okay, some volatility there and some positive sentiment. Let's look at the website. Power life on your terms. Get ahead of your energy needs with cutting edge solar home and backup. The number one home solar and battery company. I like how everybody calls themselves the number one. Um, it's, uh, it's used too much, I think, these days. Uh, I prefer to undersell and over deliver uh, rather than claiming to be number one. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. Maybe Mary could call me up and tell me why uh, they are, you know, um, number one. I'd like to know. Anyway, a little bit about the website. Let's take a, a, take a look at the products. It's uh, very typical of what we see on most uh, uh, solar websites. Can we perhaps see something new? Why Sunrun? Well, our approach, we, we know... Um, and I'm sorry, sorry for looking this way. It's just that the text on this website is so small. I have to look somewhere else to find it. We know going solar can be complicated. We are here as a, a, a as our as your expert guide every step of the way with our customers. We are creating a planet run by the sun. Okie dokie. Uh, personalized service. Our expert solar advisor offer a one-to-one -one consultation uh, to guide you through all the complexities and details of solar from understanding your energy bills to installation. The key with any solar is having a battery system. I know. Um, so if you've got uh, power that you generated throughout the day in the UK, where my home is, I'm in Dallas in my studio here, but my home is in is in UK. Um, I have solar and I get paid by the government to produce electricity, even if I use it, which is phenomenal. I get paid to create uh, produce electricity, even if I use it. I don't know if that uh, system uh, is here in the US. Each Sunrun solar system is custom designed using our proprietary software to fit your home's unique energy profile and needs. Okay, I mean, this is all very well and good, but this is kind of like standard stock photos, standard stock information, uh, you know, so nothing here to jump out and uh, attract me so far, but there won't be. This is the website. We're going to come on to the numbers in a moment. Sunrun, powering the customer-led revolution to a cleaner, affordable, and resilient energy system. Sunrun is the nation's leading provider of clean energy as a subscription service, offering residential solar uh, and energy storage with no upfront costs. Our innovative products and solutions can connect homes to the cleanest energy on earth, providing them with energy security, predictability and peace of mind. Our strong multi-decade relationships with customers generate recurring revenue and enable additional value creation through product innovation and services that also enhance the electric grid today. Sunrun uh, serves nearly uh, a million customers across the United States. All right, let's get now into the numbers. And um, before we do, let's just have a quick look at where we are today. We're going down at the moment. Let's, ha let's have a look at the week. Down 8.54. We've got a bit of a, da a down day across all the markets today. Over the last month, over the last three months, uh, we're up 20% over the last three months. Year to date, down 30% though. And if we look at it over the year, down 50%, five years, it's pretty flat again, down at uh, just down 1%. Okay, let's now go into the numbers and see if this uh, business makes sense from the point of view of an investor. All right, let's have a quick look then. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to start, of course, with the intrinsic value, and I'll give you any. I'll give you warnings if there are any. Now a lot of people will use the intrinsic value as a way to buy the stock. That's it. They'll look at it and go, it's undervalued. Most people don't read balance sheets. Most people just go on the on the basic stuff. You shouldn't do that. Um, this is just the beginning of the journey. 
Undervaluation, 33%. Great. Base case scenario, which is, which is what we like to use. Best case scenario. Well, we're not in a best case scenario. Supply shortages, again, could, could occur. At rising prices with the war. We've got stuff going on. Lots of macro conditions. Interest rates are high. Okay, that they're expected to come down, but nothing's guaranteed. Um, so we can't use that. Excuse me. We can't use that. We have to use the base case. Worst case scenario, 26%. Now that looks good so far. So far, this does look good. 26% undervalue. It's a buy from me so far. I like this sector. I, I buy this sector. I believe in this sector, even though I don't own, uh, own anything on my portfolio here um, at all. I only own the S&P. When I was buying stocks, before I was doing reviews, this is what I would buy. Solar, big time. It was the biggest part of my portfolio alongside J&J &J and Coca-Cola. Anyway, uh, that looks good. Are there any warnings? Uh, right, we do have a, a, a warning. Runs intrinsic value estimate is unreliable because it is based only on multiples and doesn't use DCF valuation. So it's very, very important to remember that um, even though we've got a valuation here, it can't be it can't be relied upon a hundred percent because we don't have all information. So you can't make an informed decision purely looking at the intrinsic value. It's what I often say. You need to uh, do a bit more research than ju than just the intrinsic value. So anyway, it could be it could be good. It could be an opportunity. We just don't know just yet. We need to do more research. Okay, look at the latest earnings. Sunrun maintained robust growth in, in storage installations with a 131% uh, increase year over year and expectations for 71 to 78% full year growth. Great. Sounds good. Uh, solar capacity growth moderated to a 2 to 5% uh, for full year 2023, revising down from 10 to 15% due to its strategic tilt towards cash generation and storage products. Okay. Annual recurring revenue surpassed 1.2 billion, up 28%. A pro forma net subscriber value of, of 14,800 reflects the potential impact of inflation reduction um, uh, at tax credits and declining hardware costs. Sunrun plans to extend and uh, upsize its non recourse warehouse loan while also extending an asset based. Uh, recourse working uh, working capital facility in 2024. Cash generation remained a focus with a reiteration of generating 200 to 500 million annually by Q4 24. Okay, looking at the financials, a solar company is nothing without a good balance sheet because tough times right now, they have to ride this wave we know uh, the future is going to be green for, for solar. We know it's going to be great. There's no doubt about that in my mind at all. Um, but we do, and we just need to bear in mind, we do need cash. It's very expensive to build a business, a lot of research and development. Um, even though solar panels don't change that much, inverters, battery power, that stuff does. And we have to spend money to constantly uh, improve and the efficiencies of the equipment if we're going to be a leader. Anyway, 2.4 billion uh, on the most recent range, which is down, uh, uh, is down uh, 3% um, over the most recent range, negative 3%. So we've dropped, we've dropped down, but we're now expected to rise again, which is what I'm expecting. Once we get the rate hikes out of the way, I'm expecting this to go up a lot more actually than it is here. So I actually think it will do better than this, but that's good to see anyway. Operating income uh, is down 7%. Uh, and we've, we know we're, that's down the most recent range and expected to go a bit lower uh, December 30th when we get the report and then uh, things will start to improve. Again, that's what we expect. Net income uh, is ne negative 1.2 billion, but again, expecting that to improve into the future. Free cash flow is gone is down 5% on the most recent range. That would be expected. Capital expenditure is uh, increased. Good that they're spending money on the capital. That's good. They're spending money uh, in the right places. Hopefully, hopefully, research and development. I think that's right. Operating cash flow is up three percent on the most recent range. Now then, let's look at the balance sheet. What we don't want to see is more liabilities than assets. Uh, we want to see a healthy balance sheet, some cash, and not too much long-term debt. However, with rates coming down, that can be a catalyst for an upside. Anyway, twenty billion in assets. 
644, so just over half a billion of that is in cash. Okay, we've got some cash, but not huge amounts of cash when you think we've got 20 billion of assets. What about our uh, liabilities? Well, long-term debt, 9.8 billion. Now, the good news is 14 out of 20 is not so bad. That's okay. That's a healthy balance sheet. It's not too steep on the liabilities. And uh, and the, the, the biggest part of that, though, however, is debt. If we got our debt down, our balance sheet would look great. 9.8 billion is a lot. Um, it's basically half their balance sheet, if you think about it. Um, 20 billion assets and 9, 9.8 billion um it's, you know, it's half of what they have in assets is debt. Now, of course, that is um, that is great when rates come down. Long-term debt, look, 67%, as you can see here. So this is um, a lot of debt, but uh, it's all of the liabilities, really. It's not, um, it, it, it's not uh, you know, too much when you think they've got 20 billion in assets, but it's a lot of debt here. It's going to bring their solvency score down. But again... Well, with rates coming down, this is, this is what we'd expect right now, um, and we might see um, we, we might see some improvement here. This is where this is where I think Enphase has the edge; it has a better balance sheet. But again, you can do your own research on that, and you might decide well it's too expensive, or this is a better buy; it's got more potential, and so on and so forth. Anyway, gross margins eight uh, percent. So um, I'm pretty sure, I'm not uh, looking at the other companies right now, but I'm pretty sure that this is quite low uh, when it comes to the, 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 um, the margin because uh, I believe, and, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that end phase is much higher than this because uh, if you've got a, 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 a narrow margin, then your moat is narrow, so the competition can uh, keep their prices high. They don't have to reduce the prices and just sell less. And basically, um, you know, they can put you out of business quite easily. If your margins are quite low, you've got nowhere to go. You, have, you can't really reduce them much, and you've got to continue selling at high rate to, to run the business. And that's difficult right now. So gross margins are declining and we don't want to see that. We want to see the margins going up, but they are declining. Operating margin, as you can see, it's negative. Net margin has dropped off. Uh, FCF margin is low. Um, so we've got to be careful here. I would imagine that the solvency score is going to be a little bit low here. Oh, yes, I'm right. Just It's just coming to view now. There we go. Look at that. Uh, the profitability score, 32. It's okay. Nothing wrong with a yellow score. We'd prefer green, but 32% uh, isn't too bad. Um, but look at the solvency, though. This 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 company, you know, is in trouble. It it might need to raise funds, thereby the uh, shareholder could be, you know, penalised there. Uh, the new shareholders will get a better deal. Those that are already in will get stung a bit. But again, raising capital to keep the business going is good long term. It just hurts the uh, the shareholders that are, that are currently already in. Um, so long term solvency is fine, short term solvency, but average DE is neg is okay. But uh, positive net debt, that's where we fall down here. We've got too much debt um, on the books, and uh, it will now. This could be a major catalyst if rates come down quickly, stay down, uh, come down quickly. This could this could really help the business. We need this because um, their margins aren't the greatest. Profitability is okay, but this is this is a concern. Uh, it's not like the business is about to go bust in five minutes, but it's going to it's it's under serious pressure. I would imagine we have we might have some short interest when we get down to that part of the review. Anyway, look at Wall Street analysts. They're saying fifty fifty seven percent upside uh, on average, twenty seven percent downside on the worst case scenario or 228% on the best case. Well, we, we, you know, the best case would be rates coming down and the war coming, wars coming to an end, but don't see wars coming to an end soon, anytime soon. Might actually get worse. Um, but having said that, we might rely more on our self-generation. Uh, if we have an oil crisis or other things like that with the Middle East, maybe if we're all powering our homes with solar, but, you know, we can only build it so quickly. Uh, anyway, we shall see how people uh, react to that. But uh, there you go. 
Move on down. Now, the competition. Now, this is very, very important. I'm going to give you a link in a minute to the competition uh, so you can go and check out all the companies here that are, that that we regard as competition. Thereby, you can look at their balance sheets uh, and see how they compare. And so if you like solar, you might like this company or you might prefer an ETF basket company of them, a collection, or you might go, I actually prefer maybe something else like um, Solar Edge or Enphase. You need to do that yourself. Now, this is a concern as well. Another concern here. So, so far, sadly, this is not a buy from me, but I'd love to hear from Mary and see if I've got this wrong. Uh, during the last 12 months, Sunrun Insiders have not bought any shares, but have sold 14.6 million. They've sold because they know uh, the stocks are, go are likely to go down for a while. Makes perfect sense. But it's never a good sign when insiders at the factory, if you like, on the board, uh, on the boardroom, in the boardroom rather, are selling their own shares. No one's buying anything. They're selling. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a reasonable volume as well. Not uh, massively, but uh, and then and that's Mary as well. That's the CEO uh, selling shares here. So you know it's it's significant. Fourteen point six million shares. Uh, sorry, fourteen six million dollars worth of shares over the period of time. Okay, so that's not great. We don't like that. Uh, now then, I said there'd be a short interest bound to be. Look at it, nineteen point one. So. 19.1, 20 percent were getting, were excessive and we might get a short squeeze if there's volume but remember gamestop was a hundred percent so we're not in short squeeze territory yet we're getting there we're getting there but we need volume and we need volume because everyone's buying in solar because rates are coming down everyone's buying solar maybe the government steps up funding or whatever it might be so uh you know that's a potential um but right now it's just a negative driving the stock down Okay, we've got some latest news here. I will uh, look at this. Um, let's have a quick look. This was uh, a month ago. Um, let's have a quick look at this one here. Some news. Let's have a quick listen in. Sachs Energy and Clean Tech Conference in Miami Beach. Brian? Tyler Matheson, thank you very much. Yes, we are joined by Mary Powell. She is the CEO of Sunrun, also a former utility executive. So she comes at it from both sides. Uh, Mary, we chatted here last year. It's good to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you so too. So they, they came in on the interview. I want to talk about <laughs> solar and storage, but they came in on the interview uh, with, you know, talking about big moves in stocks. And mm -hmm. how frustrating is it to be a CEO of a company? You're just trying to build out solar storage capacity, et cetera. When every five basis point move in, in the 10-year yield <laughs> sends your stock up or down, 10%. Why is that? I mean, we're, you know, Brian, we're up, what, over 60% over the last three months. And the fact that the Fed has indicated that, you know, likely the rate hikes are over. And in fact, we could be looking at some decreases in this coming year. Yeah. It is actually a significant tailwind for us. You know, basically lower our, rates are yeah, a tailwind. Yeah, for sure. Lower cost of capital. You know, when we look at the future, we've looked at a cost of capital. It's exactly what I've said. It's all to do with rates. And she's talk, she talked about the rise. But of course, this was a few weeks ago. And since then, uh, unfortunately, we've seen the, the stock drop off. Um, and that's no surprise, really, with what's going on in macro conditions with the war. But let's, li let's listen to Mary a bit more. I'd love to have Mary on the show. I'd love you to uh, be on my show and love to hear from you. We've structured it around a higher cost of capital. So we're actually doing much better already just in the last few months with what has happened with rates and with the outlook for 24. So but we're it, feeling... But you understand my point? This, you know, the, yeah. The 10-year yield goes down a quarter percent. Your stock goes up 50%. It's, it's, there's a lot of things that are happening that are not based, I'm assuming, on the pure fundamentals of Sunrun's business. 100%. And what we stay focused on at Sunrun are the pure fundamentals of Sunrun's business. And that's why we've been very clear with our investors that we are about generating cash. And that's... And these stocks do get heavily manipulated, like we talked about at the beginning of the review. So you can get massive surges and massive drops until macro conditions improve and rates come down and everyone starts buying solar again. This is the problem. Everyone's speculating with it right now. And there's a lot of people in the stock, a lot of short interest, a lot of people that don't really care about solar or the business. They're just trying to manipulate the stock. There's lots of that now in all of this, in, in the whole of this sector. What we're going to be doing in 2024 and that we've already guided to generating 200 to 500 million dollars in cash generation as we exit 24. So we're feeling really good going into 24. We also have, you know, you have 
hardware costs coming down. You have the ITC adders flowing in, the Inflation Reduction what, what Act. What is that? What is the... So there you go. She's absolutely right. Things will improve going forward, but it's tough times right now. Now then, let me look at the and uh, the sentiment of the stock over the last ninety days. Twenty five percent negative, fifty percent positive. Thirty days, uh, we've got twenty five percent negative. Um, same. Seven days, we've got no negative news, much more positive, 66% positive. And today, no news as yet. Okay, so there we go. Now, what we want to do is look at a back test. Because if you are going to invest in anything, you have to compare it with the S&P. It's the benchmark. If not, then you're just guessing and throwing money up in the air. So if we put in $10,000 in 2016 in the S&P, we'd have... 27, nearly a 3x by now. That's in the blue. Solar, uh, Sunrun, 10,000 in uh, 2016. Uh, that's in the red. And we'd have $12,000. So a lot less, as you can see. We got a massive pump during 2020. Now, my r thoughts for that would be, and we, uh, we've seen it across the sector, so many, so much evidence of this. In During COVID, lots of people ha got on Robinhood for the first time. Lots of solar and space and trendy and sexy stocks got bored up with stimulus checks. People had money sitting around doing nothing, playing on their apps, buying Tesla, buying space, Virgin Galactic, all these things. They all popped up. Uh, as you can see, it exploded and then it all just fell away again. It got overvalued very, very quickly. So even though it is the future, it's great. You've got to disregard this because this isn't the growth. This is just people buying the stock. Like Elon Musk was saying, stop buying my stock. It's just ridiculous. You're overpaying. I mean, we all love a can of Coke, at least I do, but would you pay $100 for a can of Coke? Well, of course you wouldn't because you can buy it everywhere for a dollar, right? You might think it's the greatest can of Coke in the world, but it's still only worth a dollar unless it's the last can of Coke on planet Earth. So that's that's what we saw there. And then we've been falling away since. Now, this 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 um, decline here, uh, dropping below the S&P, is because of interest rates. And that makes perfect sense because the S&P has many other things to it that aren't subject to interest rates. And there are, there are um, uh, uh, stocks uh, stocks within the, th within the index that are... Um, resilient to interest rates. So, it, you know, there's, there's, that, there's that sort of balance there. Whereas solar, no one's going to buy it when high interest rates are going up and worse and worse. People are going to wait before they get into uh, a long-term loan for a solar system. So there you go. There's the comparison. So to, uh, to cap off my review... Is it a buy from me? Well, before I give you my final answer, please tap the like button and consider subscribing. If you like the video, it helps the channel grow. Even if you don't like it, click the down like. That way you won't see my content anymore and you'll find the information that you want and I will end up with a more engaged audience. So everybody wins by you doing something. Don't just sit there. Okay, so for me, I'm all all about solar. I love solar. I've got it. I know it works. It, I know it's the future. I know it's not going anywhere. As long as there's a sun, we always want. We're going to want power from this from 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 it. So, it's absolutely fantastic for, as far as I'm concerned. However, uh, we 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 are in a time now where we we do have a downturn. It's difficult right now to pick the right solar company. Uh, I said I'd give you the links and uh, you want to go and compare the balance sheets. I've already done my re research on Enphase. To me, that has a exempt, an exempt, exemplary balance sheet. We've got a bit of debt with this one. So click above my head for all the links and down below, you'll find all my social media links where I post updates. If I get to interview Mary, an update on the stock, you'll see it on my X account and, you, and, I, and I reply to all of my members if you comment below. If you want a review, you, comment below and I will and I will answer and do a review for you. If you want done immediately, you want to jump the list, do a super chat, I'll get it done same day and it'll get it'll, it'll you know come straight out for you. So there you go. Over here, I'll post my videos. I've, I've done, I've got a full playlist of all the reviews I've done. I review lots and lots of stocks and you might want to go and check them out. They're unpaid, unbiased. No one sponsored me to make them. I'm not here to promote a stock. I'm here just to give you the best information so you can make an informed decision. For me, it's not a buy right now. I prefer uh, Enphase. Uh, I don't even invest anyway. I'm, I'm fully invested in the S&P. That way I'm unbiased. 
completely impartial. Um, but uh, I think there's potentially better opportunities if in the solar field. If you don't like Enphase or anything else, I mean, you might prefer an ETF. But the choice is yours. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.